like we might be getting a little bit of rain soon, which we could use, actually. Happy Homebrew Wednesday, guys. How are you? I was just getting ready to barbecue, but I think it's too windy. Um, been doing a little bit of barbecue in here. Couldn't find a brush, so I had to go buy a new brush. And then I found my old brush, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to clean this up and do some burgers on it. It's a little bit of a, need some wiping and stuff. You know, it's been an old here. It's been covered all winter, but you know how things are. So, just cleaning up the yard. Don't, don't look too close. You might see some dog prep. Um, it, yeah, in, this, in the winter our yard gets, you know, pretty much trashed. We just kind of throw things around out here. We don't really care much in the winter. So it's time to get it cleaned up so we can sit out here. There's some wood we brought home from camping last year. We like to light our little uh, fire pit here and cook. Cook stuff on it and have a little bit of fire out here in the back and in, in the summer at night sometimes. So it's pretty cool. And it looks like it's probably uh, time for me to go and find myself a beer, I think. I think that's what, what has to happen now. So, uh, got a few things I want to talk about. Um, you know, these Homebrew Wednesday videos aren't supposed to be, uh, you know, they're not supposed to be big flamboyant firecrackers and, you know, confetti. They're just supposed to be whoever wants to sit here and watch me ramble for 20 minutes or so. I don't want to hear it. It's a homebrew Wednesday video, and you know that before you start watching it. So, anyway, uh, yeah, I, I should probably go in and um, and get myself a beer. So let's go down to the dungeon and see what we've got going on down there these days. So, uh, what I thought I would uh, do today, this week, first of all, is try a few things that I've got here. Um, I have a glass that I received from a, a fellow viewer, or viewers, his, him and his wife. Um, I'll be doing a beer review that they sent me with this glass, so I'll talk about who they are and what that's all about in that upcoming video. But for now, I'm just going to use the glass, because it says home brew on it, and I'm going to go and pour myself a beer. I'll be right back. Okay. Three guesses as to what this is. First two don't count. Are we on here? Are we on camera? Okay, there we are. So, uh, what I thought I would do is give this a try. I have dr drank some of it already. This is um, that Craig Tube Porter I talked to you about where I added all those different grains um, from DJ the Chef who sent me sent me the a bunch of grains uh, in the mail. So we did the Craig 2 Porter and we added stuff to it. It's an enhanced Craig 2 Porter. We added chocolate rye, rye, honey malt, smoked malt, and all the other ingredients that were added before. So there's a lot of specialty grains in this beer. And look at the beautiful... This is out of a keg. This is not out of a... I do have some bottled that I'm gonna obviously you know put away and save and, and age. Um, but yeah, that's, hmm. So I haven't had one of these in a few days. It's been sitting in the keg just resting. I do have bottles that are going to, I'm trying, going to try and age them for a few months. At least a few, a couple of them anyway. So we'll see what happens. I don't know. We'll see how long we can let that go for. But, um, let's give this a try. Like I said, I've already tasted it last week on Friday. I was actually drinking it on my cast. So <laughs> that was almost a week ago. Excuse me. Um, and it's just been sitting, so let's just give it a let's give it a taste. Not much of an aroma through all that head there, and that head ain't going anywhere. From what I can see, let's see what it go, what we've got here. Man, if you liked the Craig Tube Porter, you gotta love this one. It's, it's it's that porter and then some. I'll put the recipe down below again. I know I've already put it below other videos, but I'll put it below again. 
so that you can see what I did here, what went into this, and I'm t <laughs> I would enter this into a contest. I don't do contests usually and stuff like that, but I, w I would. If somebody asked me to and there was one going on around here, I would enter this in. I don't know if I'd win, but I know it would be, it would, there's a chance it could, it could place. You know, it's good. It is chocolatey, it is definitely chocolatey, but it's not too sweet. It's not, there's a bit of that smoke character in there, but not too much. I didn't put a lot of smoked grains in. You taste a little bit of that spiciness from the rye. And it's just all in all, you know, the mouth feel just with CO2. Don't know, no nitrogen here. You can't beat it. You can't, I definitely taste the rye. But nothing is, nothing is like strong. Like nothing is outstandingly strong. It's a nice mix and I swear I sw I'm gonna get my tomorrow tomorrow is Thursday I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna get myself a Young's double chocolate stout and I will do a separate video and do a side-by-side -side and just see what the difference is there's gonna be differences but <laughs> I'd like to see what they are because I'm telling you right now this is a close uh, candidate to a, a Young's double chocolate stout now this isn't I wouldn't consider this a stout it's not quite as thick in the mouth but as far as the taste goes this is great stuff. Unfortunately, I can't, I don't have any more of those, some of those grains, so I won't be able to make this again. Unless I can <coughs> get some or get some substitutes for them. So, cheers. Mm. I'm enjoying that a lot. Okay. Now, the other thing I've been doing is working on this darn... wash here now let's just tell you exactly what went on with this um, I bought a, um, a, a thing it was a turbo yeast on one half and liquid charcoal on the other half and you know you brew it up with a bunch of sugar just like you normally would with a wash and the turbo yeast I didn't use the whole turbo yeast package I tried to do I want to do half half of this not the whole thing so I put it all together and it started to ferment and then it stopped. So I put yeast nutrient in, stirred it around, didn't do anything. So I put the other half of the package of turbo yeast in, threw out the rest of the liquid charcoal, and I don't know what it did. I left it for a couple weeks and I just didn't pay any attention to it. Finally, I uh, opened it up and I thought, well, you know what? I need this fermenter. I can't let this sit any longer. I'm going to throw it out. Because it was the specific gravity was 1.020. Quite a lot higher than what it was supposed to go up. You know, it was supposed to be below 1. Point, it was supposed to be below, below 0. 0.9. 0, 0. <coughs> or somewhere around 0. 0.900. 0, 0, uh, or maybe a bit above. It was supposed to be low. I mean, the hydrometer was supposed to sink right down to the bottom almost. And no, it was at 1.020, so it, it, it stuck, it stuck. And I thought, all right, well, let's just throw it out. It was $7, who cares? Before, I thought I was just about to tip it down the sink, and I thought, well, let me taste it first, because this is, you know, it's alcohol, okay? So I got a little glass, and I had a little taste. And you know what? It did not taste bad at all. In fact, it was like a sweet liqueur tasting alcohol. Now, it was supposed to be 20%, but it obviously didn't attenuate down to that because it didn't go down all the way. So it's probably about, I don't know what the starting gravity was. I didn't even take the starting. I don't know why I didn't bother, but I just figured it would work and I wouldn't have to worry about it. But it was, it's probably got about, I'd say, um, 13 to 15% alcohol. Probably 13. Um, just drinking it like that, right out of the that carboy there now it also you know I did the charcoal thing with it the liquid charcoal and you can see if I grab this again you can see that it's starting to clear just get down here like this but it is taking forever 
Okay, so what I went and turned around and did was I, I filled a couple few bottles with it and I added some of these flavor things. This one is uh, this one is Zambuca, white Zambuca, and these two are Amaretto. Okay, so I did two of these and one of those. So I did three bottles. I already finished one bottle, it's gone. So there you go. <laughs> one bottle's down the drain. Uh, or down the tubes and uh, so um, I just want to show you this and I want to give you a little little idea as to what this tastes like now uh, because there's a little bit of resi residual sweetness in this wash I don't have to add any sugar to these a lot of times it tells you to add some sugar to the bottle and then you put this in and then you know well I didn't like I just added the bottle directly to it so let's give this I've tasted these already Let's give this uh, white Zambuca a try. Let's show you what it looks like. It's gonna be have a, it's not it's not perfectly clear. All right, and you know maybe I didn't degas this properly or I don't know why it's taking so long, but um, I did put the clearing agents in. I don't know where the thing is for the, the package, but the the two you put the one in and then you wait an hour and put the other one in. So there's what that looks like. It tastes freaking good. And I thought to myself, well, I'm not pouring that thing out. I'm not pouring that out. The hell with it. I'll go buy more of these uh, little bottles. These are five bucks each, though. But I'll go my, buy more of those, and I'll, um, you know, I'll just drink this. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Um, it's not like water. It's got that very mouthfeel, that sort of liqueur mouthfeel to it. Um, and I found that's what you get from the fermented sugar. All that sugar fermented in the water leaves behind something, probably some unfermented, unfermentable thing. I don't know. I'm not an expert on this kind of thing, but... Mm. This one tastes like black licorice. No questions asked, and it just does taste very nice. But it's not really, really strong. Um, now, I'm going to have to hold on to this for a minute while I, you know, finish it so I can try the other one. See, it's not very strong as far as alcohol goes. So I'm not going to get, you know, pissed drunk off of that. If that was 20% or 40% the way some of our, our distilling friends make it, I would be in trouble. <laughs> so let's quickly try the other one. This is an Amaretto. Just pour a little bit of this here because I'm double fisted again, triple actually. Well, not not technically, technically just double. So I'll just put a little bit in here, and I'll give you a little critique of what this one tastes like. Um, as it, again, it's not perfectly clear, but you can see through it. It's very opaque. Um, the glass is steaming up a little because it's cold. So <clears throat> let's give this a try. You know, it's it. it I thought it was failed. And it isn't. It isn't right the way it was supposed to be, but it it's a, it's good enough to drink and to put things. You would add it to, to ginger ale or you know whatever. Or just and as a matter of fact, just drinking it by itself, it's not that bad um, because it's got that little sweetness to it and that sort of that mouth feel. So you know, give this a try. This making a wash. Um, the next time I do it, and I will do it again, I will film it. And I'll, I'll probably be doing that fairly soon. I'll do the whole five gallons. And then what I'll do is I'll just bottle it without any flavorings in it and just store it. And then when I get money to get the flavorings, I'll just bring them home, dump them in, and psh, away we go. So let's try this one. Oh. It just tastes like amaretto. Tastes like um, kind of like nuts, like uh, walnuts with sugar coating on them. You know, um, in a way, it almost tastes like spiced rum. Sort of. Again, it's not as strong. It doesn't have that huge bite to it because it's not. It doesn't have a lot high alcohol content, and it's it's really drinkable. I'm, I'm glad I didn't pour that out. Don't pour stuff out unless you taste it, even if you don't think it worked. Um, no sense wasting this stuff. I've had a Twitter account for 
quite some time, a long, me, many, a few years anyway. And um, I don't use it. I don't. I don't know how to use Twitter. I mean, I obviously know how to use it, you know, but I don't know how to make it work for me and make it like make it worthwhile tweeting and putting tweets in there and have it help my, you know, what I'm trying to do here. I mean, would you guys follow me on Twitter if I told you it's Craig Faraway on Twitter? I could use it as a way of announcements. Like uh, this week, the Homebrew Wednesday, Home Wednesday video will be a bit late, or this week, uh, this is what I'm going to be doing on my broadcast, or next week there's a Craig's Kitchen video coming up, or whatever. If you want to follow me on Twitter, and you, you, if you, enough of you are going to do that, then I'll, I'll, I'll throw tweets up every once in a while as to what's going on, just to keep you up to date, if that's what you want. But if nobody's going to bother, I mean, I've got a few followers already, but... So let me know what you think of that. What's your opinion on that? I'll put a comment down in the section there. I'm going to take my beer, my nice porter. I, I've, I could not emphasize enough how, how honest I'm being about this, okay? Not that I'm not honest usually, but I really need you to know that this is really good. Um, if you can get a hold of those grains and the amounts and yeast and the, uh, uh, the the hops, do give this a try. If you're a fan of the other uh, uh, porter that I did, try to get the grains for this, if not the substitutes for it, or at least some of the grains. Anyway, the chocolate rye and the rye are the ones I taste the most in here. I don't get a lot of smoke. Maybe just a little. It's, it's there. I'm looking for it. There's so many, there's so many harmonies in this beer that you kind of have to listen for each one separately. When you just drink it, you're getting a nice, full flavor. But if you know what's in it, and you, you every time you take a sip, you're looking for something. It's like, yep, I taste that. It's there. Then the next time you take a sip, you look for something else. Yep, okay, I got that too. So all the the harmonies are they're all separate. But when you're not thinking about it. They all fit together nicely in a nice dark, and I'm talking freaking, no, there's, you're not seeing anything through that beer. Um, nice dark beer. That's a, a meal in a glass. Okay, ran out of memory there, but I'm good now. So um, let's, uh, let's, let's finish this video off by going outside. I'll cook myself some burgers. Well, cook the family some burgers, and myself included. And uh, maybe at the end of this video, I'll show, you know, the burger that I made. And so I think that I'm going to pre-warn you, if you're hungry, viewer discretion is advised. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Please rate, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And we will see you on Friday on my live broadcast. Take care. Cheers out.